Hey everybody, Chief Editor of CCJ, Jason Cannon here. And joining me today is the NRR EV, Isuzu's electric truck entry, the Class 5 truck. We're gonna be driving this truck in a few minutes, but Harrison's here today to tell us a little bit about this truck. I mean, we're all pretty familiar with the regular product. This is by far and away not the regular product because it's an EV. So this is gonna feature our 25 model year updates that you'll see on the diesel chassis as well. We're highlighting them here on the EV. So you'll notice the new headlights. We've got a new front fascia design, pop-up washers for the LED headlamps. Outside of what you see on the exterior of the cab, there's a host of enhancements to the electrical architecture and a lot of the safety components within the cab. We're also gonna feature SRS frontal impact airbags for the outboard passenger and the driver. That's the first for Isuzu trucks. And the EVs will come standard with an ADOS stereo camera mounted at the windshield. It's gonna provide you a host of advanced safety features like automatic emergency braking, the lane departure warning systems. This one's featuring the Thermo King E300. This is a EPTO refrigeration unit. All right, so here's all the stuff that makes it go that you couldn't see when the hood was down. So I know absolutely nothing about all this. So Harrison, take it away. Yeah, like you said, you're used to the Isuzu chassis. You open the hood or the cab and you're used to an engine here. We've replaced a lot of those engine components with support systems. You've got your batteries going down the frame rail. Your charge port's located here conveniently on the passenger side. You know, but ultimately, anything that was powered by a gas or a diesel engine is now replaced by an electric motor and an electric drive system. So you're gonna see a lot of orange cables. That's gonna indicate a high voltage system. You've got coolant lines that supply the battery with coolant to make sure they're at that optimal working temperature. And you've also got your 12 volt system that's kind of keeping everything alive. 12 volt system is going to run off the two 12 volt batteries on the passenger side. That's going to keep the brain, the VCU, the whole system running. But outside of that, it's your Isuzu truck that you know and love, just with some extra batteries on the side, powered by electricity. So the big question, range, how far can you go? I, I realize that a lot of this is scalable. You can kind of add and take away based on your needs. So yeah. what sort of mileage range am I working with here? Yeah, it is modular, like you mentioned. So what we're showing here is a three battery pack configuration, 20 kilowatt hours per battery pack. We're estimating around a 60 mile range, give and take 10% on your use case. So if you have a heavier payload or maybe you're running at higher speeds, that could be impacted if your optimal driving situation could allow for a longer range. We're gonna offer a three pack, a five pack, a seven pack, and a nine pack configuration. When you get the nine pack, you're looking at 180 kilowatt hours. So your range of 180 miles, probably max average scenario, maybe up to around 230 in an optimal situation. So your target customer with this would obviously be somebody that's in a dense urban setting, right? Because they don't need lots of miles. A class five vehicle, you're maybe running from DC to, to front door or maybe right. from DC to DC. But if you had to paint a picture of the target customer for this vehicle, who would it be? The optimal customer is gonna be someone that has a good charging infrastructure in place, understands their route, and really has a, a good payload that doesn't vary too much so you can understand what your range is gonna be every day. Ideally, you know, urban driving, just so you get as much region as possible. High speeds is where you're gonna start seeing you know, more battery usage. If you're on the highway, you're know, hitting that 65 mile per hour top speed, you will be draining at a faster rate. Your air resistance is gonna play in there. Um, but when you're in city driving, we're expecting to maximize that range and get closer to that one or one plus mile kilowatt efficiency. Any idea what the regen brake does for the battery? Like how much am I putting back in there? Right. Over like maybe a duty cycle over a day. Every, every how you sure. guys measure that, how, are you, how much energy am I able to capture and put back into the battery? Yeah, so we've done a few demo pilots and what we're seeing is around 30% of your braking energy is recaptured into the batteries, or 30% of your usage is recaptured. So if you're doing a 100 mile route, you could maybe get 30 miles back throughout the day, depending on your braking situations. Our region is selectable, so if you get in a situation where maybe you want to coast and your efficiency is not quite as detrimental to your operation, you can lower that region and maybe uh, just change the way the vehicle operates slightly. Our recommendation is maximize everything you can, get your drivers used to that regeneration, and uh, really uh, extend the range of the vehicle overall. Is it high, medium, low, or I mean, is it three stages? Yeah, more or less it's high, medium, and low. Um, there's advanced refinement inside the instrument panel where you can maybe set it up for a particular payload or a particular driver, but they're gonna have a fast access uh, similar to an exhaust brake where you can select between you know, either almost off, high, and low uh, right there on the steering wheel stalk 
So it allows for fine-tune adjustments for uh, drivers on the fly, depending on their style of driving. So obviously you can't drive it if you can't charge it. How do I fill this thing up? Yeah, so your AC charging is probably going to be your most available. And that's going to be the cheapest infrastructure to implement for a customer. That's the top port here. That's going to allow up to 19.2 kilowatts of charging capacity. If you have a maybe a heavier duty operation or you need a faster duty cycle on your flip between drivers, you can use DC charging to really max off the vehicle. We're saying within one to one and a half hours, you can get most of your charge back. And that's gonna really help you, you know, maximize your time with the drivers in the vehicle. Uh, maybe do a longer route if you have an opportunity to charge midway through the day. This is a pretty reasonable setting for what this truck's gonna have to do. I mean, we're only gonna make, what, three or four miles. and. Exactly. That's what, 5% of the range of the low end, so. You're right. So we talked a little about regen. This stalk right here is gonna allow you to select between three levels. You'll see a little triangle next to the D at the top left. Yeah. When it's full white, that means you're on the maximum available. All right, so I am on max right now. You are, and you're not gonna feel a whole lot until you get to about 20, 25 miles per hour. Okay. And that's gonna be where you start feeling the full curve. It's gonna bring you down to about five to seven miles per hour. And then from there, you'll have to use a brake pedal to, to stop. This model has auto AC, so just like a passenger car, you're gonna set your temperature, and more or less the system's gonna take care of it from there. So how does things like HVAC draft against your range, or does it? If this is Vegas, it's 95 degrees in the summer, it's gonna be over 100. If I'm cranking the AC on max and max low, am I taking my mileage range down? It will impact your range. And to be honest, the cab cooling's part of it, then you also have the battery cooling. To keep those batteries at their optimal condition, you're using a, a whole refrigeration loop to maintain that internal temperature. Um, so the cabin temperature is gonna be part of it, uh, driver comfort, but also just maintaining the batteries where they need to be. I wouldn't say it's detrimental, but it's gonna be a few percent of your range. I'll probably give up a few percent for AC. I agree with that. Yeah, that sound you're hearing in the background, it's, it's AVOS, so it's a, a vehicle system that awares a pedestrian that there's an electric vehicle near them. Uh, really, you don't have that uh, engine sound, you don't have anything really coming from the intake, so it's a very quiet vehicle. Um, so that AVOS system is just alerting pedestrians when you're below 14 miles per hour that there's a vehicle near you. So we're back after a drive maybe a couple of miles. Again, it's not a very long drive, but a reasonable drive for this truck. I mean, we made a lot of left and right hand turns. That's all this truck is gonna do is bump docks briefly, unload and go. This is a nice little truck. The ICE engine version of this truck is a fantastic truck. This is a technology leap forward version of a fantastic truck. When it enters production, I think this is gonna be a strong entry in that medium duty market, especially in urban settings like Las Vegas, like Los Angeles, like Dallas. This is absolutely a viable technology in those type of settings, and especially in applications that don't run you know, 150 or so miles, and then if you need to save a little money on the front end, you spec fewer batteries. It's all about how expensive these trucks are and how difficult the infrastructure buildup's gonna be. That's an easy way to kind of take some of that expense out just by right-sizing the truck or your operation. Absolutely, get your payload figured out, get your range figured out, and you can really optimize the equation.